Back in 2020 over in Europe, the 48th best regional Brawlhalla player had just been banned for two years from competing in all Brawlhalla hosted events. Then after two years of watching, practicing, and growing, Godly came back and is well, Godly. There's so many initial questions I had. The first time I heard of this player was in my comments section and I was wondering, who is he? Why is he so good? And what do you mean banned? Not many Brawlhalla players get banned. What happened to the other banned players? A lot of this information is deleted, hidden, or buried deep in old tweets. And some of it's in Google Docs, but it can still be put together. Essentially long Longtime Brawlhalla Pro and core member of the scene Daiku decided EU needed a change. Not one done through DMs or private Discord calls, but an open calling out of all toxicity that was cycling throughout the region. Unfortunately, one of the players associated in the mentioned toxicity was Godly. Being only 17 at the time, the only thing I could relate this to was being too young, surrounded by influence, good or bad. I always avoid these calling out scenarios because I know there's a reason for everything, and I sympathize with those unaware of the impact they have online or talking to others since, like me, they probably had to learn the hard way of what not to do and what not to say. Say. Some of us learn better through actions and watching others, so depending on who you are and who you're around, you won't know any better. To sum it up, when you're with toxic people, you become toxic, especially at a more susceptible age. I think what separates Godly is his ability to learn from his mistakes. What separates most pros anyways is their ability to learn from losing more than winning. I'm sure even the best pros like Sandstorm had to lose sometimes to know what they're doing wrong. Luckily enough, the other night I managed to catch one of Godly's Twitch streams. When someone asked him how to improve, his response motivated me even further to explore his ban and comeback. Any tips to improve? Honestly, number one, really simple. Grind the fuck out the game. Literally play the game. And number two, I'd say watch pros. Watch players who are better than you. Take things from them. Don't try to really copy their play styles, but just take things. Like, for example, if you're like a bow main or some shit, watch like Akna, watch bow players. Take things from them. Take combos. Take stuff that you've just not seen before. Pro players are obviously players better than you are like... Every interaction they're doing is going to be better than the interaction that you'd be doing. But just take things from them. That's what I did when I was getting good. As someone who was just banned for two years and kept with the pro scene, I think he knows a thing or two about watching pro play. If anything, he's amazing evidence that the advice he gave works, seeing as how he had to watch pros for two years, then come back to competition. Not only can you learn from your mistakes or successes, you can learn a lot from those who have walked the path before, or even further down that path. And I'm not trying to be too philosophical, because he already was a top 50 pro before getting banned, but I think taking the time to take a break and mature helped improve tremendously in the long run. February 5th is Godly's return debut. Went Winter's 2022, seated initially at 86, Godly would make his run straight to the top three. One thing I'd like to point out about Godly's gameplay is his strange movement on the ground. You could say it's not too weird, but it's definitely a new way of keeping someone on their toes. Essentially, he's always turning around a point, or pivoting instead of jumping or dash dancing. Sometimes he'll do it so quickly he'll stagger the character and they'll walk in place for a bit. In his first tournament back, not only is he lagging, but he's forced into switching his character. Akno is clearly the better Koji here, and now Rayman was really strong in the meta, but usually when people switch their characters, it's not a good sign, because you'd rather just see them win on their first pick, since the second picks are usually less practice. Oh, we gotta talk about the person who, this is gonna be their first foray into the single space in Europe, for quite a while. This is a person who, again, he took a year hiatus and now he's back and we saw him do really well in doubles last week. And so the question is, how well is he gonna do in singles today? Let's talk about Godly. Godly is sort of gonna be the outlier of all that because he is coming in seed 86 to this, but Godly is no new player to Brahalla whatsoever. He wasn't able to play in tournaments for a very long time and now he's back. And the talk of the town for a while has been that Godly is one of the best, if not the best, EU player. It is kind of funny though. Like, literally no one predicted the outcome of the Grand Finals. If you don't know some of the pro players I'm going to mention throughout the video, keep in mind they're from Europe. EU before the Godly era was kind of a toss-up of who's going to win, because commonly someone would win the World Championship, like Pavelski, and then take a fall from Grace, and just bounce around first to fifth place, and really, no one ever knew who was going to take first place home. So if I say a name you don't know, just know they're all very good players, whose ranking may not be so obvious as it is in NA. Godly, much like Luna, enjoyed Axe during winters, and also like Luna seems to have a very active reaction time. However, slightly different in playstyle, Godly goes for a lot of reads on the ground, preferring Axe Enlight instead of Eslight all the time, which is odd because you can't follow up Enlight like you can follow up Eslight. Instead, you rely on making another read. Godly also barely uses signatures, maybe one to two per game, and sometimes they don't even connect, which along with a dramatic amount of weapon throws is more of a new style for Brawlhalla pros. On the brighter side of things, you hear people clapping in the background as Godly wins. He was still caught really high in the air. Is he gonna get caught? That is the end of the tournament! 
Winning with a Scythe Gimp was very different towards how he played the beginning of the tournament. I wonder if this ending was a catalyst for forming a more dominant playstyle that's focused on using more decks. On top of an already dominant playstyle, after the Winter Championship, he didn't let anyone else near the first place podium. After winning the Winter's Championship, Godly then went on to win $8,000 in the Omen Oasis tournament, won the Steel Series Championship, then went on to win a match against Machete while not even being there, and then won 1v1s and 2v2s for an additional $9,000 in the Spring Championship. All of them in a row, so unexpectedly. So why haven't we heard of him sooner? If you've been playing Brawl or tapping into the scene for more than two years, you may remember DiQ releasing a Google Doc publicly calling to certain top European pros for condoning or encouraging toxic behavior. This Google Doc included the names of multiple people listed along with their PR ranks and achievements, a few of which were good friends with Godly. Ties with some of his online friends would bring him into all of this. On a quick side tangent, EU has always had a weird relationship with toxicity. As many of us know in America, we're taught the phrase, if it's not something nice to say, it's better not to say it at all. Commonly, in European culture, they are very direct and not afraid to tell you what they think is wrong or right, which to the rest of the world can seem kind of cool to not care about what others might think. But wrapping this back into gaming, it's led to Europe popularizing being toxic as a sign of hype or fun to be controversial. A popular group known for toxicity in League of Legends is L9, who grew to fame off of being way over the top toxic. Of course, this is a very small but very vocal minority of European players. So I'm not promoting this behavior or saying anything in agreement, but it's easy to see how someone can be in the wrong place at the wrong time to get caught up along in this extreme banter of sorts. And I think this is what happened to Godly. At the time of his ban, he was only 17, so I can't be upset or blame him. I was not a perfect 17 year old either. If I was anywhere near as good as video games as he was, I probably would have been called out for saying some stupid things too. But luckily I had some really smart friends who would tell me what not to say. And to all of you listening, make sure to keep those genuine good people around you so you stay alert and don't fall into the wrong place. But back to Godly. A two year ban sucks, but it might have been what was best for him. After deep diving into his Twitter, I found a few key moments of change or growth where we see a slight attitude improvement or a new side of him. Of course, it's not like I know him personally or I've ever talked to him, but I'm going to do my best here to document his growth over a two year period that we can see through his Twitter account. Now bear with me, as you can imagine, a lot of these accounts are either banned, lost, or deleted in this controversy. One last important thing I should note, it was a major shock value to see how much BMG trusted DiQ and his word to ban these pro players. Many in defense of Godly believe the content that was used to ban him could have been out of context and was not enough to support a two year ban. August 11th, 2020, DiQ released his first statement on EU top pro players for being toxic. Godly retweets a tweet from pro player Knees making a joke about the matter. September 13th, retweets more jokingly unbanning banter from Knees. October 21st, last retweet regarding the ban. Godly turns 18. July 21st, 2021, signs of drama with Delta. Really hard to tell if this is real or not. The original tweet is deleted. August 15th, nearly a year after the ban, still supporting those in Brawlhalla trying to get better, still active in the community, and still watching. September 18th, retweets promoting actions to enforce better behavior in Brawlhalla. October 20th, seems to care about toxicity in the game and is making light of it. November 24th, addressing Delta, mentioning not having the best start, but getting over it and is now proud of him. December 31st, shouts out plenty of new pros who he started talking to and making a good start for the next year. On February 5th, 2022, Daiku comes back around to support Godly in his first tournament win back hosted by BMG in over two years. May 10th, Godly sets some goals for himself. Godly turns 19. June 18th, Godly has come full circle and is now in support of stopping toxicity in Brawlhalla, using his following to bring light to an issue. Present day, Godly is now coaching, streaming, and seems to genuinely love playing the game for an audience, and recently won a community tournament with Luna. Sorry if it seems like I included too many tweets, but I tried to keep it as consistent as I possibly could throughout the years. Essentially, Godly grew up, and instead of saying in one loud echo chamber of noticeably toxic activity, he became so successful his own voice is loud enough to be valid and stick out in support against toxicity. Once again, unfortunately, we have never spoke, or do I know him, or have I ever been to the UK as much as I'd like to go. I hear it has lots of rain, and I love the rain. However, I think this is a great example of what a smart person can do when they choose not to give up, take a break, and come back with a better attitude. Godly is a story about not giving up and improving not for those who got him banned, but for himself and setting goals to be great. What's next for Godly besides hoping to continue to dominate in his region is eventually fighting Luna on LAN. This is because they're from the two largest regions, and they're the best players in each respected region, so fighting in a lagless LAN environment would prove who has the better top pro in their region. If either one wins, it'd mean an incredible amount to the server they play on. Even at MSI, lots of European top pro players couldn't attend due to visa issues, so it'd be an incredible story for Luna and Godly to meet in tournament. I couldn't even imagine the hype if they met in Grand Finals. So who do you think would honestly win? Both Luna and Godly have a top tier Mordex and are insane with Axe plus Orb. 
I think it would be really exciting to see who they played and how close the match would be. Personally, as an American, I know, boo, whatever, they suck. I'm rooting for Luna. I like his attitude, his confidence, and his wholehearted belief in himself. I genuinely look forward to watching more of Godly and paying more attention to EU. They're very different from NA in character picks and playstyle, generally a lot less jumping and a lot more Koji. If you ask me, they're actually smarter when it comes to character picks. This probably comes down to not having such a large ego, so they just pick what's best and get good at it. Also, I'm mainly referring to Bo because it's broken. Thank you all for watching to the end of my video. I truly appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you in the comments for your predictions about Godly. If you'd like to support me and the channel, please subscribe and like the video. I'm really grateful for the amount of responses you guys give and attention you've been giving my recent videos so once again thank you for that also i would just like someone to master diana because i think Bo and guns is just broken i think it's like like diana has to be the best character in the game i mean i, I think so but then again i'm not playing her either so it can be all sorts of characters but thank you all again and i will of course upload again it's kind of how the whole thing works I'm sure you knew that i'll talk to you later goodbye